Hey guys, hope you're having a good week so far. We have a lot to cover here this week. We got retail sales number late last week. We got a lot of housing data coming out here this week. And our question of the week uh, going into to today is all about concentrated stock positions, what you can do to minimize taxation, uh, what this really dictates in the first place and, and how you can kind of manage that if it's an issue. My name is Brandon Steele. I'm a financial advisor with Main Sale Financial Group here in Bellevue. And our goal every week, every Thursday is to bring to you the market news, kind of talk about some of the stuff that we're really watching, uh, hopefully weed out the stuff that doesn't matter and really bring to you the, the top stories or the things that maybe you can use to implement or change any strategies or, or consider in your investment and planning um, considerations. So we'll kind of jump into it. Uh, as I mentioned last Friday, we had some data come out. We had retail sales numbers come out at 0.7%, which was a huge, huge surprise. So we actually, the, the expectations were that retail sales numbers were going to retreat a little bit. The expectation was a minus 0.2% number. And again, came out at 0.7%. So quite the surprise. Um, my question, I guess, is how much of this is related to inflation? versus actual goods purchased, right? Because keep in mind, this number is a dollar number. And so I think we all know the inflation challenges that we're dealing with today. Uh, and so, you know, uh, it's hard to break down like where this exactly came from, whether it was confidence and people going out and purchasing, or was it just that what we were already purchasing costs more? Or maybe a combo, right? Um, but either way, good good sign there, I, I think. <laughs> um, and good to see that that did not pull back. And then as far as housing goes, we had a lot of data come out this week. Uh, housing starts came out at 1.56 million, down just slightly. Uh, building permits, 1.59 million, down just slightly. And then today, Thursday, we had existing home sales numbers come out at 6.9, uh, excuse me, 6.29 million, which was slightly up. So not a whole lot to report there. I think, you know, for the most part, the housing market just keeps to, seems to keep, keep rolling. Um, as far as other numbers, uh, today we also had initial jobless claims come out. And for those who pay attention, you know, we have been watching this very, very closely. The good news is we had another good number today. Initial jobless claims came out at 290,000. We were expecting about 300 and last week was 293. Um, again, for those who follow us, you know that I think it's been about the past four weeks straight now. Luckily, that number has kept kind of creeping down. So very, very good to see this. Um, we were in a period there for a while where that number was creeping up. Not a good sign, as you might imagine. We want to see the jobless claims dropping, more people working, and hopefully these last four weeks or so are a good sign of that, despite some of the terrible non-farm payrolls number that we got for the month of September. Maybe this is a sign of a little better number to come as we get the October data in a few weeks or so. So not, not a whole lot this week. The retail sales were important, the jobless claims were important, but coming up, we actually have Fed Chair Powell talking tomorrow. So get ready. I think we should you know start to put like an over under on how many times we'll use the word transitory. I can't wait to hear that as inflation still continues to show, even with some of the slowing behind Delta and all that stuff, the price, like you guys all feel it, prices are up. Um, so it'll be interesting to see what he has to say. And they're talking about tapering or pulling back their bond purchases in November. And so if that is still the plan, which I think a lot of people feel it should be, pay attention, make sure that, you know, some of the, I imagine he'll be hinting at that quite a bit in his conversation tomorrow. And then next week we have consumer confidence numbers coming out. So that will also be important to watch, see where the, the market's at in terms of confidence and where this economy is heading. Um, with that, we'll transition into our question of the week, which I think should be very relevant uh, in this area, especially here in Washington. We have so many, you know, clients and folks that we talk to who have just giant, giant positions in concentrated stock or in stock, I should say. You know, we've got Amazon, we've got Microsoft, we've got Facebook, we've got Google out here, we've got Boeing out here. Um, and so a lot of the folks that we talk to will have these giant positions in their employer stock. And that's really what we're referring to here. The good news is that because of the markets and the way especially these companies have gone, you know, a lot of wealth has been created through through these stock plans. But obviously you get to a certain point where number one, the wealth has been created and now you may wanna start thinking about preserving that wealth, right? 
Um, but number two, you know, obviously you may want to take some chips off the table. You know, these things don't run forever. Think about Kodak, think about, uh, you know, if all Motorola, oh, I shouldn't say Motorola, Blackberry, like, you know, all these different companies that were once these giant, giant companies and really uh, have fallen off, right? So as long, as great as a company can be, doesn't always mean that's going to be the case forever. So it's always important when you have too much uh, concentration in a position to start to peel that back. The challenge, however, is taxation, right? If you have a giant piece of your, your net worth tied to a company stock and maybe didn't pay a whole lot to get it and it's just appreciated like crazy, your concern may be, well, how do I handle taxation with this? And I, I'm not necessarily going to get into the details of all this today, but there is a lot to consider with concentrated stock. If you own it in a 401k, there's something called net unrealized appreciation that may be worth exploring. Um, may let you take some of your company stock out, basically pay ordinary income, and then from there on, it might be treated as, as um, capital gains treatments instead of ordinary income taxes. Uh, there's a lot to explore with that. It's a very complex strategy, so don't just take it at that surface, but that's something worth looking at if, if you find a lot of employer stock in your employer plan. Um, there are also exchange funds out there that may allow you to put stock into a fund and it basically it diversifies, but for that you have to kind of give it up for a few years, um, but it diversifies and spreads out your tax burden. Um, you may want to use maybe some sort of stop loss or maybe some sort of option strategies that might kind of allow you to play defense in a way. And that way, if the stock pulls back, you know that there's something in place to kind of safeguard some of that. Um, there are also things like blind trusts where maybe somebody else has discretion on your account. If you are maybe an executive or somebody who has to worry about insider trading, that may allow you to sell that stock where otherwise you may not have been able to. Um, there are different versions of that too. There's also like a 10-5-B-1, I believe it's called plan. Uh, they're all different flavors of that. But, you know, obviously if you have to worry about trading and, and windows of trading, there are certain things that you can do to make sure that your intentions are set up without worrying about the timing of those transactions. So there, there's all kinds of ways to handle this, all kinds of ways to consider around tax planning strategies. But the key is if you do have concentrated stock, you wanna to start to explore that a little bit, make sure you know all angles that you have available to you, and then start to think about what one or combination may fit you best to start to diversify that a little bit and manage taxation along the way. Here in Washington State, we have a capital gains tax coming up, and so this is very relevant at the time. Wanted to make sure to share some thoughts on it. Um, but hopefully that helps. If you guys have a question you'd like us to cover, please go ahead and shoot it over my way. We'd be happy to help answer them in the question of the week to follow. Have a great day. We'll see you next week.